following program is classified PG. Parental guidance is recommended for persons under 15 years. Get ready to match the stars. John English. Marlene <laughs> Brown. And Lee Dave Bray. Carol Ray. Stuart Wagstaff. Peggy Tufano. As we play Graham Kennedy's Blackity Blanks. And now, here he is, the man who recently said you only go round once in life and who can't wait to get started, Graham Kennedy. <laughs> Thank you, good evening. Dave, I didn't hear what Don Blake said. What did he say, Dave? He said, you only go around the world once in life and he's still waiting to get started, Graham Kennedy. Is that what Don said? Didn't you like that? Well, I know I didn't hear it, you oh, see. I thought it was very funny. I wonder what show he'll be on next week. <laughs> Carol Ray is here, Stuart Wagstaff is here, Peggy Tapano looking dazzling in whatever that is. Oh, it's a Chinese wedding jacket. What is a lovely girl called... Peggy Tapano doing in a Chinese wedding jacket. Attending Chinese weddings. <laughs> Please yourself, Peggy. I can't it. Nolene, my darling, how are you? I'm lovely. You're in a dark mood yesterday. No, I'm good today. You all right today? Mm -hmm. John English? Fine, oh, thanks. You're yeah. looking well, John. I'm feeling good. Uh, all those awesome. years of playing Judas, mm. six nights a week, sometimes eight nights a week. Eight shows a week. Eight yeah. shows a week. Yeah. Harry really nice. puts them on, doesn't he? It yeah. does. Did, did it not have its toll? Did it not take its toll on John English? No, except the rumour got around that I was very well hung. Boom, boom. Oh, of course, oh, yes. <laughs> That's right, because Judas, ah. in Jesus Christ Superstar, of course, gets hanged every night. And as John just That's... succinctly put it, I'm well hung. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out if you wish. I don't care. I'm 42. <laughs> Hello, Carol. Hello, darling. Your, uh, Carol is starring at the ensemble in um, the Neil California Simon's suite. Neil Simon's play, yes. Neil California. Simon's play, which is just on Broadway. Yes, on Broadway now. I'm doing very well there and hopefully we'll go on doing well here. Go along and see it. Neil Simon's always funny. I don't think he wrote a bad one. And Carol's in that at the ensemble. It's called California Suite by Neil Simon. This Carol over here, Carol Croxon, has won $200 in blankety blanks. <laughs> I would have to say, so far, Carol, since you've had, what, three, three goes at Supermatch, you really should have $3,000. I think you've had bad luck so far. Yeah, I think so. Good but luck I think I'm tonight. Lucky to get to hear that. Good luck tonight. And we meet our new challenger. His name is Rick Sinclair. <laughs> Rick. Tell us the Rick Sinclair story. Graham, I'm a credit officer with a computer firm. I'm married just a short time and How uh, long? eight months. Is it good? I think so. See, they said it, it wouldn't last eight months already. Good, good luck with blankety blanks. Thanks, and because you are the challenger, Rick, you get first shot at it. A or B? A, thanks. A. And in round one, every match is worth a point. Nearly said every point is worth a match. <laughs> the absent-minded chef put gravy on his dog and took the blank for a walk. Absent-minded he was. The absent-minded chef put gravy on his dog and took the blank for a walk. Come on, then. <laughs> took the blank for a walk. My dog, of course, has had all his legs amputated, poor Rover. Oh, so what do you do, Graham? I take him out every night for a drag. Bob on! <laughs> Come on, there. Slide along there, Rover boy. Everyone's in. Why am I doing jokes? Uh. Rick, the absent-minded chef, put gravy on his dog and took the blank for a walk. Took the meat. Took the meat for a walk. What a sensible answer. <laughs> I hope the meat was well hung. <laughs> Roast beef. Roast beef is oh. meat. And that's a match. <laughs> Nolene. The absent-minded chef put gravy on his dog and took the blank for a walk. There's only one thing he could have put it on. Steak his is a match. <laughs> Dave, I'm, what have you got I'm a bit absent-minded, actually. Are you? Last night, I plugged my electric blanket into the toaster and I kept popping out of bed all night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's only the tenth time. <laughs> the roast is a... <laughs> Oh, Carol, the absent-minded chef 
Put, I know you're dying to have a look. Have a look. Please, can I? Because I brought these specially to do it with. Oh, you brought your pince nez. Oh, look. Isn't it That's good? Beautiful it's beautiful and brilliant, exquisite. Brilliant new shirt man in Sydney. I'll tell you oh, all about him as the series progresses. If it progresses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, Carol, now that, that you're finished with my body. This? Yes, we do. Because I want to. All right. <laughs> the absent minded chef put gravy on his dog and took the blank for a walk. The roast. Roast is a match. You're doing well, Rick. Stuart? Well, there are variations of, of, of roasts, and he yeah. took his joy. Very That's right. This tiny little lead with a joint on it. Yes. <laughs> Meaning, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean it. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart will be doing some work with Don Blake somewhere <laughs> next week. Peggy Tapano in your Chinese jacket. The absent-minded chef put gravy on his dog and took the blank for a walk. I should have said chop suey, but I didn't say his joint. I said joint. Joint Literally. and a perfect score over there yeah. for Rick Sinclair. This means you've got to be on your metal, <laughs> Carol. W field. W <laughs> feast W feast W feast. Oh. Fe I still can't say. <laughs> You've got to get six to tie, Carol. Oh. That's even to be in a tied game. You feeling worried? Very. <laughs> Why don't you take your joint for a walk? <laughs> w C Fields said. We've got it right. Whenever I go fishing. I always catch the big ones because I use my blank as bait. <laughs> W.C. Fields said, Whenever I go fishing, I always catch the big ones because I use my blank as bait. I used the same card I used before. You got it. No, Stuart. No. <laughs> Who's seen uh, Rod Steiger in the movie is just fantastic. Oh, oh superb. Like, not just the voice, but you'd swear it's him. Carol's in. Peggy's in. Indeed, everyone has done that. Now, my love, the first... The, <laughs> the first one you don't get, that's it. W feel... Well, not quite it. W feel... See... <laughs> Charlie Chaplin said... <laughs> Whenever I go fishing, I always catch the big ones because I use my blank as bait. Worm. That's a good answer. <laughs> Got any worms? No, well... <laughs> yes, but I'm still going fishing. Um, W.C. Fields, I, if I remember correctly, didn't like children, so I put... That's a very good idea because W.C. Fields did not like children. <laughs> Nolene? He didn't like water a lot either because of what the fish did in it. That's right. He said, I never drink water because fish have intercourse in it. Oh, is that what he said? Well, no, he didn't, but you can't say what he said. <laughs> I could disguise it in a bird call. <laughs> we'll all go say <laughs> No, no. You can, see, you can do what you want. There's no broadcast control board now. Right. It's all gone. One, two, two three. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, moving right along. I'm sorry. Oh, no, started. that's all right. I thought it was something else, actually. So I think he put his cigar in it. His cigar, no. Mm. Oh. Well, that's what it was noted. That's what it was noted for, wasn't it? Really. Yes. I, I oh. Oh, also. that wouldn't have occurred to me, but it occurred to Dave, and it <laughs> occurred to Nolene. Yes. And what occurred to Carol? To me. And to oh, blimey, Stuart. I think it's something well pickled, which was his nose. His oh. nose. Yes. Peggy. I thought of exactly the same as Stuart. His, his nose. nose. Oh. Yes, I think that whole round was a little Go. on the nose. We'll be back in a minute with more blankety. <laughs> Tonight on Aussie Gold. Mum, you haven't been making a fool of yourself, have you? It's the mother of all Aussie sitcoms. Double episodes of Mother and Son. Tonight from 8.30. Part of... Now, this has never happened to me before, nor have I ever seen an episode of this program, which is based on a very famous American one called The Match Game. I have never seen a situation where the challenger can't play in round two. But you can't, Rick, because you've got a perfect score. So it means, Carol... 
You can select A or B, but you have to get at least six matches to even stay in the game. So A or B, mm -hmm. one of them's easy, possibly one's even easier. I'll pick A. A. Ugly Edna. You're looking at the You're looking at me for. <laughs> <laughs> he said Edna. <laughs> what a terrible thing to say about Mrs. Edgeley. <laughs> <laughs> Whom we all love. I, yes. I, I think I can talk for everyone on this, uh, <laughs> in this group here. We love uh, Edna, and she's touring with something at the moment. Circus. The circus, I suppose, mm -hmm. is on mm -hmm. this January. Ugly Edna is so ugly that when her husband takes her out... <laughs> <laughs> Read the end of it. <laughs> ugly Edna is so ugly that when her husband takes her out, he puts a blank on her. That's how ugly she is, ugly Edna. She's so ugly that when her husband takes her out, he puts a blank on her. Thank you, Carol. And to this Carol, and good luck. Ugly Edna is so ugly that when her husband takes her out, he puts a blank on her. A bag on her. A bag on her. A bag. John, did you think ugly Edna deserved a bag? Well, when you've played Judas for five years, you get very used to letting people down, mate, and... Uh... A leash. So that's it. I'm sorry, Carol. And Rick, Rick Sinclair is our new champion. Come up, Rick. <laughs> Carol, thank you for playing Blankety Blanks. We'll see you again soon. You get a lovely Toshiba prize. Goodbye. It's been good having Carol. Bye-bye. <laughs> And in a moment, we will be back. Did everyone have bag? Yes. Oh, no. Paper bag, bag, hood, hood. hood leash. Hood Gosh, bag. it might have worked, except for Judas. Yes. You, you well-hung Judas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in a moment to play Supermatch. Rick, we polled a recent studio audience and sought their most frequent response to this. Blank source. Oh, I've got an answer. Blank source. Now, if you match their most frequent answer, see this group of people, we polled them. You should have seen the size of the polls we're using. <laughs> <laughs> if you match their most frequent answer, you win $100. If you match their second most frequent answer, $50 is yours. Third, $25 if you match it. Now, you may select any three of our celebrities to help you. Who first, Rick? Uh, Dave Gray. Thanks. Dave Gray. Tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. <laughs> of course. Tomato sauce. Oh, the sparkling piggy. The sparkling piggy. Apple sauce. Apple sauce is good. I like tomato better. And Nolly. Well, being fond of Chinese food, soy sauce. Soy sauce. <laughs> I suppose it does have to be a food answer. I don't know. I won't go into that. Now, listen, Rick, you mightn't like any of those. You might have thought of something even better that none of us have thought of. If so, I'd go for it and reject all those. Uh, I think I'll go with Dave Grave, tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. <laughs> Well, now, let's, as usual, start at the bottom and reveal the $25 response. Peter? Peter's pulled it and he's got an apple there. <laughs> That's 25 so it's not... Let's, I, I think you could do quite well here. The $50 answer. Thank you, Peter. Oh, hot sauce. Oh, yeah. Hot sauce, I suppose. Oh, now I'm worried. All right, we'll put us all out of our misery. As Peter prepares to pull <laughs> the $100 pickle pepper. Tomorrow! <laughs> you have won $100, which no one can ever take away from you. But now you play for 10 times that amount, $1,000. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Sounded a little canned to me. <laughs> <laughs> but you must match one of our celebrities precisely. Now, who do you choose, Rick? Uh, Stuart Wagstaff. Stuart Wagstaff. Do you feel that Stuart and yourself 
probably think along the same lines, Rick. We have a few things in common, yes. You have a few things in common? Yes. I'll talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> Just turn around and watch me. <laughs> Super match. This is for $1,000, Stuart, for Rick. Aha. Baby blank. Baby blank. And Stuart's already locked in. This is for 1,000 bucks, Rick. Let's hope you're thinking about what Stuart's already written down and locked in. Baby... Oil. Baby oil. Oil. Baby oil. There's nothing wrong with baby oil. In fact, a lot of us use that for... Uh, Oh, help me quickly. Why do we... <laughs> <laughs> make up, make up. Keep our skin to soft. keep our skin yeah, soft. soft. What I was yes. thinking of is baby shampoo because oh. I use that because it's very gentle on Graham's not very good job. many strands left. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart, uh, for $1,000, Rick could use. If he'd married eight months, he'd buy a nice, lovely piece of furniture with that $1,000. we are looking for baby oil. That car waiting outside because I'm out. Baby face is what I would have said too. Back with blankety blanks and we have time for round one. Uh, oh, and we have to meet a new lady. Rick is our champion uh, and we know about Rick, but who is Trisha Conabare? I'm 24 and I live at Lane Cove. I'm not married. 24, not married and lives at Lane Cove. That means she's Rick! I want to see you after two. You're uh, our challenger, Trisha, so uh, A or B? B, please. B. And, of course, everybody plays in round one. Each match is worth a point. I'll just pick that up. <laughs> Get out of it. Oh. <laughs> Susan wrote this poem about her new husband. Before we were married, he gave me a mink. But this year for Christmas, he gave me a blank. <laughs> now, I think it must have to rhyme. Susan wrote this poem about her new husband. Before we were married, he gave me a mink. But this year for Christmas, he gave me a blank. Come on, Nolene. Dave. Dave Gray. Come on, Dave. Let's sit, Dave. Trisha, Susan wrote this poem about her new husband. Before we were married, he gave me a mink. But this year for Christmas, he gave me a blank. A wink. A wink is a good answer. <laughs> I think it's a terrific answer, mate. Mer Merry oh. Christmas. A wink! Yeah. Yes, it's a mate. Nolene, yeah. have we got a wink from you? I didn't even think of a wink. I thought he was a really mean fella and he gave a kitchen sink. Kitchen sink, of course, yeah. rhymes. It's not a match, though, Dave. Oh, uh, well, I said. It's a, a wink. match. Carol, very quickly now, I think. Yes. My love. Uh, like a no sink lean. like no. Women uh, always think along uh, the same line. Wink, a wink, wink, wink from wink. Stuart and a wink. <laughs> we'll see you soon in Blankety Blanks the next time we play it. Thank you for being with us. Good night. All prizes are moved by Grace Brothers for movies the professionals. Interstate artists fly and set and drive Avis your other car. Whilst in Sydney, Graham Kennedy chooses to stay at the Boulevard Hotel, 90 William Street, King's Cross. Is a Red Grundy production.